Hello learners, hope you are keeping well. Uh, today's lesson is settlement geography, urban settlements. All right, so let us enlarge and get going. Okay, so let's look at firstly the exam guideline to see what we're going to cover. All right. Uh, and here, let me get my highlighter. We're going to look at the origin and development of urban settlements, urbanization and the world population. Of course, we're going to look at the concept of urbanization and different concepts related to urbanization, urban, urban expansion, urban sprawl, rate of urbanization and level of urbanization. Obviously, the interpretation of graphs, I will include in these things as I explain them or these concepts. Then we're going to look at how site and situation affect the location of urban settlements. And then we're going to look at classification of urban settlements according to function. And here we look at central places, transport and town, trans trade and transport towns, sorry, break of bulk points, specialized towns, junction towns, and gateway or gap towns. All right, that is our curriculum for this section. So let's get going. All right, uh, first of all, the origin of and development of urban settlements. All right, and here it was just simple. We needed surplus of food to, in order to allow activities to change and to develop, etc. So. The first issue was that farming produced surplus storage food, all right? So when the farming produced that, and there was more food than they needed, all right, and food was available, then obviously all people did not have to farm. So people then did not have to farm and did other activities like making goods or equipment, example for farming, to improve farming, education, building infrastructure were some of the examples that people started or activities that people started doing. Okay, so let's look at this. All right, now what actually happened, they still lived in nucleated settlements, Okay, so that they could trade with one another. They brought in their goods, maybe food, vegetables, etc. And they traded for equipment, uh, maybe some form of currency, etc. But they still lived in nucleated settlements. Then, when transport routes improved, towns developed along these things because now transport allowed people to move across remember all forms were the transport the wheel was such an important invention because it allowed for for people to move whether it was by ox wagon or whatever but people could move around so they didn't learn need to live right next to one another and of course from there we started having the villagers the towns and the cities developed, all right? From there, at each stage, as you look at it down here, it moved from the village to the town to the city. Urban settlements started growing bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? Now, let's go further. Let's look at the concepts like pre-industrial towns and cities. All right, before the Industrial Revolution came about, these cities, as seen here, they busy with the market area, was concerned with commerce, trade, and craft. 
The people made different things, whether it's baskets, whether it's tools, whatever, and there was trade involved. Therefore, it was more trade and commercial orientated. This was before the industrial, the pre-industrial era. All right, let's go further. Then we had the industrial towns and cities. As the name indicates, they were mainly concerned with manufacturing. You can see the large amount of factories in this area. Mostly manufacturing was the main thing here. Okay, and we come to a next type, the post-industrial towns and cities. And here the main focus was services. There was still a large amount of manufacturing, right? Uh, far, uh, primary activities like farming, etc. But there was more people and facilities in terms of the services, uh, whether it was commercial, uh, uh, whether it was selling stuff. You understand whether it was banks, whether it was technology, IT, education. All these things now took over as technology was allowing more production in the industrial sector, all right? Less people involved, okay? Because all this now developed and there was more IT, etc. involved, okay? Let's go on. Now, the other things in the curriculum he was looking at urbanization and the world population. Firstly, we need to look at what is urbanization? Right, and many sometimes many people confuse this with the increase in the number of people, and I think this one needs to be made very clearly. It's not the number of people only, right? But it deals with the increasing proportion or percentage of people living in urban areas, all right. That means the percentage of people in urban areas is increasing. Uh, maybe two years ago, it was 52% in urban areas, 48% in rural areas. Now it's 54% in urban areas and 46% in rural areas. All right, so it's showing you here the percentage of people, the development happening, etc. I can see large amount of people in this urban area, buildings and buildings and buildings, because the percentage is increasing. And of course, we have to look at the world population. We know that urbanization is growing rapidly. At present, almost 71% of most uh, economically developed countries are urbanized. That means the developed countries, 71% of the people are urbanized, okay? At present, 34% of economically, uh, less economically developed people are urbanized. So there's more urbanization in the developed countries than in the developed countries, okay? In terms of people being urbanized. And of course, the main factors is natural growth, babies, all right, and rural urban migration, people moving from rural areas to urban areas. Of course, immigration, etc. There's various other factors, but these two are the main factors. Okay, let's look at the other concepts, related concepts, rate of urbanization. That's another concept that we will look at and you can get tested on, is the pace at which urbanization is occurring. The pace at which, all right? How fast is urbanization occurring? Maybe in one country it was 40% last year and this year is 42%. In another country it was 40%, now it's 48%. That means the second country moved by 8% compared to 2%. So the rate is faster. A little observation here, learners. If we look at places like Europe, we notice it had picked up and now it's flattening the curve. If we look at North America, it's raised and now it's, the curve is 
flattening means less people are moving so the rate there is slowing down but if we look at Africa we notice the rate is picking up so it's not flattening if we look at Asia the rate is picking up can you see it? and of course Latin America okay uh, the rate is picking up can you see it so we can work out here that in developed countries the rate of urbanization is slowing but in developing countries the rate of urbanization is increasing or is higher because already in developed countries people have already settled the, 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 the rural areas have the people the urban areas have the people they have already moved over but in the developing countries there's a larger amount of people going into the urban areas to seek a better life to seek better facilities so can you see the interrelationship between sections rural urban migration all right all these factors coming in here so they are related, right? So don't learn your work, work section by section. You have to relate them because that's how you can get tested. Okay, so let's go on. Let's look at the level of urbanization. It refers to the percentage number of people living in urban areas. Now you can easily take a guess. Who would one will have a higher level of urbanization developed countries or developing countries and i know you guessed right higher level now is what developed countries because people have already moved over there's lesser people in the rural areas because now they have high technology you don't need many people to work in the rural areas machinery is doing the job there's more people moving over because now in the developed countries, uh, your tertiary and your quaternary activities hold a high percentage. All right, they are advanced in terms of technology, etc. Machinery is doing the things. Okay, whereas in, in, in developing countries, we're getting there slowly. You understand, there's still people moving to the cities. They're not so advanced in terms of uh, having technological facilities, IT services. Uh, not that they don't have high level, but the amount of that, because many people are still in poverty, etc. So the demand is much less. And it's clear to see. If you look at North America, Europe, you'll notice the blue colors, which tells you the level of urbanization is almost 100%. All right. And if you look at the 20s and the 40s, you look at these areas, Africa, uh, Indian subcontinent, parts of Asia, they, which are lower, okay, developing countries. So that's a percentage of number of people uh, living in urban areas, okay. And you may wonder, but what is the difference between level of urbanization and urbanization? That's one more thing I just want to clarify. Urbanization is the increase in percentage it's increasing and level is the percentage okay do you have clarification on that okay let's go on urban growth is another one and please note i'm coming across another concept urban expansion just now note the difference here it is the number of people living in urban areas it relates directly to the number of people there's town a there's 40 million people living in town A. All right, that's the number of people. All right, and it's growing. Can we see? Okay, the increase in the number of people. All right, so uh, there's 40 million here. What happens next? Okay, it's not the percentage, it's the number. Okay, have you got that clear? So if I look, the number here is less. Urban growth has happened. The number has increased. Can you see? From this to this. That is urban growth. Increase in the number of people. Okay, not percentage, which is urbanization. I'm sorry I'm taking time drumming this point in, but that is the actual thing that you must remember. Okay, let's go on. Urban expansion. 
Now, this refers to the physical expansion of an urban area. The size of this urban area, yeah. And I'll get my pointer here, so it'll make it even clearer. The size of this urban area has grown. Can you see it? It's physically expanding. So watch out, urban growth increase in the number of people. All right? Urban expansion is the physical expansion of the area. Okay? And urbanization is the increase in the percentage. Okay, let's go on. Urban sprawl. Let's look at this concept. Urban sprawl refers to the formless expansion of the area. So it's a physical, uh, it's an urban expansion. Okay, it's growing, but this is formless. All right, you can see here these shacks and whatever that are built, there's no real shape, it's just growing in every direction. There's no planning involved here. So it's a form of urban expansion, but it's a formless form of urban expansion compared to the other one where there was more infrastructure and it was planned. This is the formless expansion. Okay, let's go on. Now let's look at how site and affects the location of urban settlements. I know this seems fragmented, which is doing concepts, concepts, concepts. But as we go through settle, uh, settlement geography, we'll be applying many of this. Okay. And in the end, I'll even show an example question which used some of this and applied it to other sections. Okay. So we already know from our previous sections that you would have completed that site is the exact location on which the settlement develops, the exact the piece of land. And some of the main factors are obviously water supply. You will need water supply, whether it's for industrial, domestic, whatever, even those offices need water supply. Relief, of course, the distribution, if it's businesses, large buildings, you'll want to be on flat area. Maybe scenic housing, maybe you will be on sloping areas. Underlying rock structure, all right? Underlying rock structure. If you look here at these big buildings, if the rock structure is weak, you can't put these skyscrapers here. They're not gonna withstand, the foundation won't hold this. So rock structure must be proper. Drainage, if it's poorly drained soils, it's gonna be moist. It's not suitable for building infrastructure like this. Raw materials like resources available, if it's there around there, where you can manufacture your bricks, your power supply for your coal, from coal, all that will influence a settlement if it's large. Okay, so resources around your iron and steel for your manufacturing of goods or your iron ore for manufacturing iron and steel and other goods. If it's nearer, cities will develop around it. So that's site. Let's go on. In this one, we could look at, I'm oh, sorry, in this one, we could look at uh, underlying rock structure because we have tall buildings, flat land, it seems, eh, as another side factor that was allowing this to develop. Okay, then situation affects location of urban settlements. Some of and that, you know, is a location of a settlement in relation to the surrounding area. We could look at transport, access to market, all right, to sell your goods from your settlement to other areas. Like Johannesburg is linked very well with infrastructure, therefore developed and developed. You understand? It's linked to KZN, Durban, Cape Town, all right? It's got markets and transport. If you look at this little one here, yeah, in this area, you can see the ocean. So it's developing along the ocean. Cheap water transport for exports and imports. All right, that is a situation factor. Okay, now we look at the last piece of this section and that is classification of urban settlements according to function. And I'm gonna move my face over here. All right, and if you look at this, the first one in your curriculum was central place, right? 
it's an urban area that provides urban functions to surrounding rural areas. I gave an example at Beaufort West. This little central place, can you see it? And the roads leading out supplies the surrounding rural areas. So it's a central place town. Okay, like Beaufort West. Right, let's get to the next one. Here we look at trade and transport cities. Now, what I will define are towns that developed as a result of trade and transport. Example, East London. These are towns which develop at a point where transport routes meet. All right, so it's easy for trade to happen here. Right next week, there's trade happening here. And transport is available, accessible, cheaper, whatever the reason may be. Okay, that's your trade and transport towns. All right, your break in bar point, or break off bar point, you understand, are where goods are transferred from one mode of transport to another mode. All right. Example, the docks where goods transfer from ship to truck. And Durban is a nice example. All these goods are offloaded from the ships and then it's put onto trucks. You see those trucks with those containers behind that, behind them? Those are the trucks that take it away. So it's moving transfer from one mode of transport to another. Of course, I know some of us look at breaking bulk to remember easier. Ship comes with all this bulk, you understand? And then trucks take it away in smaller quantities, if you want to remember it like that. But the most thing is that it moves from one mode of transport to the next. Okay, then specialized towns. They developed due to one main Factor example, Umschlanga Rocks. All right, it's a recreation town along the beach. You understand, and the main function is recreation. You can see all the hotels, etc., found here that rely on this. There's restaurants, there's entertainment centers. If you take away the recreation in this area and the people visiting the tourism and whatever this place will die. Okay, so it's a specialized one with one main function. It doesn't have to be recreation, it can be anything. You understand? Where well, mining could be the main activity, whatever. All right, so when you're looking at your questions, look at what was the specialized activity in the area. Okay, then we get junction towns. These develop at important intersections. Example, there are, there's an railway line, railway line intersecting, right? There's more going this way, but it connects Port Elizabeth to Cape Town. What a nice place. You've got two big markets in the area at that intersection. Can you see? So it's nice to build here. A town can develop like the R developed and can supply both places as a market. Okay. Then we have the gateway of gap towns. Develops in a gap in a physical feature like a mountain. Harrismith is a good example. Many of us going down to uh, KZN and you pass Harrismith, you will notice mountains on both sides. And that's the gap or port as we learned in, in the map port features. All right. And the town is situated in there. Okay. Now, Let's look at a DB paper on this. And uh, of course, that's what we always must do. And I know I always sound uh, like a broken CD because I repeat myself. It's so important to do a past paper at the end of each section. Okay, so let's look at what this question says. It says level and rate of urbanization. Can you see in all questions, and of course it's specific to South Africa, there's something in there that the examiner gives you. Next to the figure, it tells you, directs you to what is it. We know level, all right, how urbanized an area is. You understand? 
okay and rate how fast it's increasing how fast it's urbanizing we know those two already okay so let's look at what information it's given us all right we notice it's in level of urbanization is increasing if you notice the percentage is moving up from 60 to 65 all right rate of urbanization we also notice it's increasing okay in percentage can you see it? it's increasing all the time so both level and rate is increasing we picked up other factors that in developing countries level will be lower than developed but rate will be higher but we don't focus look at what information is given to you in this case, we find that both are increasing. They're showing you from 2006 to 2016 for both. Okay, so I don't see anything else. I could have missed something, but at least I interpreted what I saw there. And of course, I looked at everything. This is the percentage. Okay, so we know all our factors here. Okay, so let's go to the questions. First one define the term urbanization you'll notice the scaffolding in this the first question will lead you on give you a better understanding if you know the concept and you know how to apply it you flow through all right so look at here of course you know it by now learners the increase in percentage of people living in urban areas please the difference between your concepts you need to know what's urbanization all right, urban growth, level, rate of urbanization. You must know the difference between those points because you could make a mistake here. You could just say the increase in people living in urban areas. That's urban growth. Can you see it? The important words must, you must know the difference. Increase in the percentage. Okay, let's go on. State the relationship between level and rate of urbanization that means you're comparing them how they related okay and if you look at it of course it's from there and you notice already from our little sketch both are increasing can you see it as this one increases that one also increases so that is the relationship between it and we're looking at the general relationship here Right. As the rate of urbanization increases, the level of urbanization increases. Of course, you want to go directly with some high words, the direct proportional relationship. That's also fine. You're showing that the proportional, that one increases, the other one increases. Okay, let's go on. Let's see the next one. State two physical factors in the rural area that could have contributed to the rate of urbanization. Few words here that are very, very important, All right? Now, we look at physical factors. In geography, it's your natural factors, okay? It's your natural, physical factors. All right. Second one, it's specific that the rural area, how could the rural area have contributed? Okay. Specifically to rural. Now you start thinking rural urban migration. Can you see the different questions from the other section on rural settlements comes in here? Okay. That is why geography, you can't just rogue learn. You have to interpret, uh, relate your sections. Okay, so that it becomes easier. Otherwise, you may just get the one mark for the definition and lose out on these marks. Okay, so when I look at this down here, rural areas contributed to the rate of urbanization, not the level, all right? The increase in percentages all the time. How fast is urbanization happening? We know it's, it's relatively fast, all right? And thus, it is increasing. That's what we see in the diagram, that the rate of urbanization is increasing. So what caused urbanization to increase? All right. Obviously, you have to look at the physical factors. And you know, some of us will come mechanization. 
Therefore, people move from rural areas to urban areas. You can't use mechanization because mechanization is not a physical factor. Look at what they spoke about here, the examiners. Drought frequency, all right? Lots of droughts push people to the rural urban migration, going to the urban areas. Flood frequency destroys crops. People become bankrupt, unemployed, leave the rural areas. El Nino you learned about increases droughts and or floods, all right, which damages the area and not much farming being able to be done, all right, and also you will find less employment, people leave. Soil erosion decreases production, forcing people to leave, whether it's uh, what you call it is uh, unemployment because less people are there, less production, sometimes farms close down, stock diseases, pests, all right, that's caused from natural diseases that go, come from the natural environment, causes them to abandon their farms, farmers leave, stock die. Any adverse weather conditions like hailstorms, all right, which destroy crops and decrease profits. Can you see it? Because the production is affected. So can you see it's all physical factors. And this is why you must be careful when you read highlight. Maybe highlight like me, but make your line straight, eh? not so untidy like mine. Okay, but you must highlight so that you know. Okay, and now I'm over highlighting. <laughs> okay, and then let's look at the last question. Write a paragraph of approximately eight lines discussing reasons for why the rate and level of urbanization has led to increased protests against service delivery in urban areas. Now we're talking about rate and level and why protest action. What is both showing you? That urbanization is increasing, all right? Therefore, there'll be more people in the urban area. That's how you're making sense. There's more people in the urban area. Lots of people, it's flooded as I showed you the photographs. It's flooded. So what's gonna be the protest about? Okay, it talks about service delivery. All right, what's service delivery? Water supply, housing, all these issues tend to come out. You understand? Why would there be pressure on it? Because there's too many people at one time. Even if government really wanted to supply, they cannot supply all of them at one time, meet their demands. So already I worked out what my answer is going to be based on. All right? Can you see? Increased urbanization, increased demand for housing. Can you see it? Inability of local government to meet this demand led to protests. Because so many people you can't build houses for so many people overnight. Lack of planning, that could be one from local government, could be a problem that they could have catered, but lack of planning was an issue. Lack of services in informal settlements, and people are not happy about this. Okay, because now people don't have houses, they live in informal settlements, there's no pipe water, electricity, and of course protests come in. Okay, unreliable service delivery, you know, load shedding, water shortages, all these things come in, make people protest. Sometimes it's too large to service the area. Services are not properly maintained, so therefore quality deteriorates. You'll find pipelines breaking most of the time, the water stops. Urbanization increased unemployment rates because now there's more people, not jobs for everyone. And people get frustrated and start to protest. There's an increased demand on services such as clinics and hospitals. You know, you go to many of our hospitals, especially the public hospitals, it's full. You spend some time a whole day because the number of people have increased. All right, and the, this is the, the health facilities are not very accessible to people. Traffic congestion, as there's not enough roads or unmaintained roads for the people. Can you see it becomes so obvious? 
lack of space in schools, learners, you know, due to high population numbers, there's 40 in a class. In some cases, there's 60 in a class, right? And I'm talking Johannesburg and surrounding areas. And that's a lot of people to teach and therefore protest. Protest due to forced removals and demolition of informal settlements, right? Leaving people without shelter. You've seen this happening. People have built sometimes areas where they don't, they're not legally allowed. You understand? Or they're not, they were told not to, and they get demolished, and there's protest. Protest due to land ownership and access to land. Of course, various land program, programs have come in. People have built and said, this is our land. All right? Uh, and therefore, we, we owe we one land because we've been deprived of it, various reasons, and there's protests about getting it. And of course, due to competition with foreigners for housing and employment, and other stories, many people believe that if, uh, people coming from other neighboring countries are taking their jobs, you understand, or competing for them, or it's cheaper labor, so therefore they're taking away, and therefore there's protests, you understand? Unhappy with other issues like nepotism, corruption, Preventing them from assessing government services like housing. We hear stories in the newspaper that somebody had a contract or a contact and poor quality housing was being built or houses were given to some people, yet some people were earlier on the list. And this creates protest also. So all these issues, which are real life situations, but we had to read properly reasons for high rate and level increased protests in service delivery in urban areas. It has to pertain to services, like this question did. Okay, so nothing again is difficult, learners. It's about understanding your work, applying it, and looking specifically at these issues. Okay, I hope this lesson you made sense to you. I'm sure it did. Uh, all the best. Keep well, learners.